Okay, you also need to know tables and graphs for the HSC. As a requirement of the course, you need to know how to draw tables and also get information from tables. And this involves um, also going a step further and drawing graphs as well. In as any assessment task, you may be asked to draw a graph. So always take a ruler into your exam with you and also extrapolate information from it. As a little bit of a, a play graph here, I've got the M&Ms in a 250 gram packet. You can see here that the blue M&Ms in a packet seem to be the most common M&M um, in the actual packet. However, the yellow tends to be the least favorite or in the packet there's less of them. So it is important to understand how to get information from a graph. This means the question may ask you to make an estimate of the future values as well if the graph measurements continue. So if the graph starts to incline and says what will happen the next year, if it's inclining, you're not going to say it decreases. You are actually going to keep with that trend. Tables. When conducting experiments, you are expected to tabulate your data when appropriate. If you do make a table, it's always good to follow up with a graph. For this experiment, you may be growing seedlings or seeds from two different plants under the same conditions. When you get into independent and dependent variables, you'll actually understand for this experiment, I'm choosing the independent variable is the two different species of plants. So you may measure the height of each plant over a period of time. Your table may look like this. Plant A and plant B may be the same species and plant C and plant D may be species two, for example. And you look at the time in weeks. So you can see here at zero weeks, which is the first initial measurement, um, they're all around about the same size. This is very important to keep this controlled in your experiment. You're not going to start with one plant that's a baby seedling and then another one that's quite mature. Graphs. So you're expected to know how to extract information from graphs and describe their trends. The two main graphs in the HSC are line graphs and column graphs. Graphing is an important procedure used by scientists to display the data that is collected during an experiment. They must be constructed correctly to accurately portray the data collected. So for full marks, you need to do the title of the graphs and explain the difference between the independent and dependent variable for the title. You also need to label both axes. Each little section of the graph is actually worth marks. So it is important that you don't forget the title, the axes, or even the units of measurement that you use. So if you're measuring in millimeters, you need to put that information in the graph too. If you're measuring more than one um, variable, then you need to also have a key with different colors. The key is very important so you can tell which is which on your graph. For this graph, this, it has a scale of 10. If you can see it's going up by 10 and each graph can go up by different multiples. You need to make sure that your graph spreads out over your piece of paper so that the values your graph is, is quite spread out. If I went up by 50, for example, here, the graph would be so small that you wouldn't be able to tell too much of the difference between, difference between each of these students here. So the scale of numbers will be dictated by your data values that you have in your experiment. How to draw a graph. You need your title, as you can see here, and you need a label on the Y axis, which is the vertical axis over that side, and the X axis, which is the bottom horizontal axis here. So the title depicts what the actual graph is about. By reading the title, the reader should get an idea about what the graph is showing. So it is important to put the information in the title. It should be a concise statement placed on top of the graph. Let's look at some data. So for this, um, it's made up data, so don't think it's real. However, it is typical values of this summer in Australia. So from the 1st to the 7th of January in 2013, these values from day one to day seven, we've got 35 degrees Celsius, 42 degrees Celsius, 32, 30, 40, 28, and 33. So you can have a go at doing this graph now. You can press pause. And I'll continue. So this graph will be better represented in a line graph as there are continuous consistent data. This is a typical line graph that you may draw. 
So as you can tell, both axes start from zero, which is very important in science. I have noticed in one past HSC exam, um, in the sample answers, they didn't start one of the axes from zero. However, in science, it is important because if you don't do it from zero, it can skew the values and actually make them look much further apart than what they are. So you can see here, I have got a title, maximum daily temperature from the 1st to the 7th of January in 2013. I also have the axis maximum daily temperature in degrees Celsius, so there's the units. Each of those are actually worth marks. Then we have the date in January in days down the bottom. In science, this is usually the best way to draw a graph so the information is not skewed starting from zero. So, multiple data. Now I'm going to compare Australia with England. Again, these are made up values, but very typical of England climate in January. So when there is more than one data, you may need to separate the information using different colors on your graph, and it includes making a key. You can have a go at this now and press pause. Okay. This labels what each line represents. So I have got here a key and yellow and pink. So the yellow is Australia and pink is England. And you can see those two different values are represented differently on this graph. The column graph. This graph represents the average annual rainfall in North Mackay from 2001 to 2012. Now this is just showing your representation of a column graph. However, because this is continuous data, you would be able to do this also as a line graph. Um, there's one fault with this graph, and that's the fact that it doesn't actually show the 2002, 2004, 2006. It's only got every two years, and you would put all of the information that you can in that graph. You would also put years down the bottom. This graph, okay, so going back to this graph, it shows the two different um, data and it does show there's a key down the bottom with school attendance and also their grades. So they're trying to see if there's a correlation between school attendance and grades. They have a key to distinguish between attendance and grades as well. So more examples of graphs. Here's another one that you can try for yourself. We're looking at days and rainfall. Pre press pause here to have a go. Okay, you need to create your own title and also label the both X and Y axes. This is the example of that information. As the continued data is continuous, the best graph for this would have been the line graph. I have got here, we've got the labels in the axes, the rainfall, time, and also the title. And this concludes um, graphs for today. <laughs>